you know, tell us, everybody wants to know what's life been like for you this past year? Obviously, it's been a crazy, a lot of ups and downs, but what, how are you doing? COVID was a tough year. We lost a baby, lost a husband, had a baby. So it was a tough year, but I learned a lot. We grew a lot and uh, made a lot of new friends, spent more time with people that didn't leave the house either. So we got a little core group of people together and we'd go spend a couple days here, a couple days there so we could work and still have a life. So it was fun. It was kind of like camping. Right. I mean, what, what have you learned about yourself over this past year? That I don't like being alone. Yeah. So I realized, you know, I work, I have a beautiful office in Newport, but I work at home a lot. So every time four o'clock, five o'clock, I would go out for a few hours. Mm -hmm. I really missed that. But it ended up, I'd go for a walk on the beach with my best friend and we just had so much fun. We'd sneak through the little orange fence that they'd put up to keep everybody off the beach, but <laughs> wasn't much of a rule follower, but we learned, to, I learned to cook a little bit and Colton got to practice more on his cooking. I had gotten a um, cookbook from Chef Ryan Scott as a present mm -hmm. and we just have been working our way through his recipe. Oh, so fun. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That's great. How's business been going? Business is great. Good. I mean, there's probably a lot of divorces <laughs> from COVID. It's like, God, I can't spend all this time with one person. So there's a lot of listings. A lot of people moving to Texas and Vegas. Not happy with the California taxes being changed. So it's been, it's been good. Yeah, I know. Same thing out here in New Jersey and New York. Everybody's moving to Florida. <laughs> oh, my God. And my son, Shane, and my son-in-law, Kyle Bosworth, are both realtors in Florida, and they're just killing it. Yeah. Oh, they're in Jacksonville just buying boats and living life big. So it's very fun for them. Definitely very fun for them. How is Kara doing with the new baby? She is loving the new baby. She is so funny. I'll have to send you the video she sent me yesterday. Baby's got an outfit with pockets, and she goes, I'm going to make you start carrying your own I'm going to put it in your pockets. He's just <laughs> looking at her like, no, I don't want to carry my I love that so much. It's I mean, so funny. Was it hard to keep the pregnancy a secret? For me, <laughs> she didn't tell anyone except her core little six friends there. And for me, it was so hard. So about eight, seven, eight months, I started telling my friends, you can't say anything, but this is why I'm going to Florida so much. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I can't keep a secret. That's <laughs> why when they did this fundraiser to raise money for McCoy Bosworth charity at Wolfson's, they didn't tell me. Okay. So luckily after they told me and I told my friends, of course, they got another bunch of cash. So now they're up to like 73,000. So that's, that's so really cool. That is so great. I mean, how did she tell you the baby news? She said, I don't want to tell you because you can't keep a secret. <laughs> I said, I promise, I promise. But I think she waited till she was three months before she told me. Yeah. She had a lot of fear with this. Even though the, the you know, things that happened with the last baby weren't anything that she couldn't resolve because she knew. So they just induced the baby three weeks early so he'd be small enough to come out. And uh, he is precious. He's already rolling over in a month old. That's amazing. So, I mean, how are you get the stuff? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I mean, how are you there to support her during this loss? I can't even wrap my head around what your family must have been going through at this time. When it was happening, I did it from afar because of COVID. She said, I don't want to lose you and the baby. So you're not flying here until we know for sure it's safe. Mm -hmm. So Vicki Gunvalson says, get your <laughs> packed. I'm picking you up. We're driving to Florida. I said, oh, my God, it'll be murder on the highway. Vicky kills Gina after 20 minutes in a car. I'm like the worst car rider. <laughs> it wouldn't be Thelma and Louise. I'd be dead before I hit the state line. I'm like, are we there yet? Are we stopping for lunch? Do you want a coffee? Do you have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> so when Colton puts me in a car to go to Vegas or where else do we like to go? Arizona to see Matt's parents. He gives me like a margarita to just get me in the mood so I'll sleep the whole way there. That's amazing. So Vicki was really there for you during this time? She was. She was a good support. She, was, she had lots of great ideas. And, you know, being in the insurance business, I think she, she goes through a lot of this drama with her clients as well as I do in real estate, the first person they call as they're heading to the hospital is me. 
you know, because so, I've been to the hospital so much with my husband and friends when they move in. When they move in, they don't know anything, so they call me. They call 911, and then they call me. Where should we go? What should we do? So it's good to have friends that are prepared as you get older that know how to do stuff. Definitely. Were you amazed by your daughter's strength during this time? Yes. Yes. If I could not, I don't think I could have. Maybe I would have been a bigger person, but I couldn't think of giving up my baby's organs and skin and tissues and things that she did to help other children. But she was so, I worked so hard. I worked out, I ate perfect, I did everything right. I just can't let it go to waste. I needed to make something of his life. I needed to help other people. So she did that and then she did the first March of Dimes fundraiser for pediatric NICU kids. And she raised 50,000 for that. I mean, then she started writing a book. So she's just amazing. I mean, she stayed in the house for probably two and a half years because the whole time she was pregnant, she stayed in because COVID and just to get her out of the house a little bit now, she did get vaccinated. So she's feeling a little better and getting out of the house, but she didn't even go out and talk to her neighbors. I mean, it was pretty bad. Yeah. She was pretty depressed. So is she, is she just loving life now though? With the, the She's a lot better. Okay. She's just, I don't know where she came from. She's just so sensitive to everyone's needs and, I mean, the therapist did tell her, don't listen to anybody except for the little bit of names on a post-it note. Otherwise, it's your grieving. You grieve any way you want. If you want to write his name in the sky with an airplane and whatever, she just did whatever she wanted that made her feel better. And her neighbors were huge supporters. They made a beautiful, there's a landscape architect in the neighborhood, and he made a McCoy's garden at the end of the street and the kids all play down there and just had his one year birthday party down there and released butterflies and it was so beautiful and she just has this amazing group of friends that's so amazing. and I think that's so important that's such a good thing to say is like people grieve differently and you should let people grieve however they want I think that's so so important yeah I did realize before when a friend lost a child in high school high school son that she said, you know, you're the only one who will tell me a funny story when we run into each other. Something you remember that my son did at your house when he was playing with Shane. And she said, I just really appreciate that because I want to know that he's remembered and I want to know that people think about him occasionally. And, and so Cara's kind of that way too. She wants people to give her shirts that say McCoy and candles, funny candles that make you laugh, you know? Yeah. So. No, I think I, a good friend of mine lost her daughter as well. And, you know, they just want to keep talking about it, keep the memory alive, which I think is so important. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, you have to move on, of course. Right. But yes. Yeah. And yeah. how's your weather in New Jersey? Is it nice? It's, you know, it's a little, a little dreary here today, a little rainy. So, <laughs> but you know, that's all right. Spring is right around the corner. So we're, we're getting there. <laughs> Been any baseball games yet? Or no, no. Old? No, we haven't been to any uh, baseball games recently, so, you know, not for a while, but hopefully this summer, now that, you know, we're starting to get more people in the stands, hopefully we can get out to a Yankee game. <laughs> yeah, Cara and I are going to come to a Yankee game. I don't think, I don't know if she told me when yet, but her, the godfather of Decker's Garrett Cole, the Yankee pitcher, right. so we're going to go head out there and try to catch him in a game. That would be awesome. That'd be so much yeah. fun. <laughs> that would be so great. And I know you said, you know, obviously Vicki has been through with you for, you know, uh, some difficult times. I mean, what other housewives have kind of reached out? Obviously, you know, it's been a, a year since Matt's passing and I'm so sorry about that. I mean, how have people kind of rallied around you during that time? You know, I heard from every single one of them. Yeah. So everyone, um, Tamara Judge and Gretchen is, I always see Gretchen connecting with Cara on Instagram and everyone connected with me and reached out to Cara. So it was really great. That's and great. Bravo was great. They were very supportive and sweet. Mm -hmm. and Shane's doing a Mother's Day show for Bravo. So that That's should be right. fun. Yeah. yeah. Is he so excited about that? He did it already and he won't tell me much about it, but You'll have, to tune. You'll have to tune in to see. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to see. <laughs> Did you ever think t you and Tamara would be in a good place, good-ish place? Yeah, I always thought we would because we were all like sisters in the beginning. We watched every episode together at my house. Mm -hmm. Our kids all were raised together for five or six years and 
except Shane wasn't around much because obviously he had left for school. But um, no, I, I knew it was just something she did. I don't, I know she planned to throw wine on me. I don't think she planned to throw it in my face because she knew that my trying to help her not press certain kind of charges against Simon that would cause him to lose his job, mm -hmm. that I just said, get a restraining order, not the other one that made him lose his job, which is your support. Mm -hmm. So she just didn't understand. She was young. Yeah. Now I'm sure she understands that I cared about both of them and, and I probably put eye drops in. And it came from a good place. I always give people advice. If you don't want to, don't listen to it. But I'm old. You should listen to me. I've learned a lot over the years. <laughs> Is it true that you had like blurred vision for a few weeks following the whole drink throwing incident? Yeah. If you've ever got lemon or alcohol in your eye by accident, opening champagne or something. Yeah. It was maybe a week and a half. Yeah. That's a they gave me drops and stuff and dilated my eyes, but it burned. It was like a full glass of wine. And I don't know why my eyes didn't blink shut. You, you, you I think it was shock. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. it, have you, Vicki and Tamara, gotten together? I know you said like maybe a couple of months back on a podcast that you were all thinking about getting together, but did that ever happen? Oh, yeah, I think it was my birthday. Tamara and Vicki had said, let's get together. And then, was that right when Vicki ended up buying the house in Mexico, maybe? And everybody just got busy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Were you shocked but, that Vicki and Tamara are no longer friends with Shannon? They aren't for the moment, but I'm sure that'll change. You know, they went through a lot together, and they were the three amigos, and one of them will run into each other somewhere, and it'll be over. That's the good thing about having relationships with women like your sisters. You, It all gets blurred in the end. What does it matter? I mean, when Simon um, was diagnosed with cancer, all of us reached out to both of them, and, you know, it's just it's life and life moves on and people do bad things and you forgive and forget. Yeah, that's all. Definitely. Do you think Bravo made a mistake in not having Tamara and Vicky back? I personally am betting that Tamara is coming back to the housewives. I think uh, Kathleen French had once told me she was like liquid gold. Everything that came out of her mouth. <laughs> of course I laughed insanely like a hyena at the time, but I think Tamara will be back. And I know Vicky would like to go back, but I don't know if she will. I don't know if they would want her back or not. I think it's moving in this gener you know, the younger generation. And it's really not that believable, even though I have a lot of girlfriends that are 35 to 45 when we hang out. But it's not really believable that five women of all these assorted ages would go on a trip together without their fiancés or husbands or boyfriends or something. I mean, girls' trips are fun, but come on. Group you know, this age, nowadays, nobody really wants to be away from their significant other for eight days on a trip. Mm -hmm. I'd rather go with couples. It's more fun. Yeah. Do you think that you could ever do this again or would want to do this again? You know, they'll probably come out with a show in the next few years about where the Housewives Now sort of show where they'll come back and revisit everybody's life for a few minutes. And I think that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. But I have been on a, I've been to come to some of the things. Bronwyn had invited me to the opening premiere of her, for, you know, first season, first episode. She had the premiere at her girlfriend's house, um, and everybody wore sky tops in honor of me. I thought it was so cute. I was like, I love that. you guys, where did you get those things? But they went <laughs> online and found them, and then she had a whole bunch on a rack because people couldn't find them. And I thought that was really sweet of her. I've known her since she was a little girl. Yeah. What did you think about her story this season, and how is she doing right now? Well, I heard she broke up with her girlfriend, and mm -hmm. I haven't heard if she's back with her husband full-time or if she's looking for other girls. Or I think she's just going through changes, and I've known their whole family because Colton was best friends with her cousin, Tyler. So Colton grew up at that house with Daddy Ray, the grandfather of uh, Bronwyn, who raised her when her mother went off to college. So... He, he raised most of his daughter's children, so he was a really cool guy. Yeah. Taught my son a lot about fixing things and sewing things, and Colton can take stitches out of people, and he's really talented from that guy who was a doctor. Yeah. You know, I spoke to Gretchen recently, and she said, which was kind of interesting, she said that this season really didn't have a lot of relatability. She felt like she really couldn't relate to what was going on in everybody's lives. And, you know, Andy said that if he thinks that, you know, Real Housewives of OC needs to be reworked. Do you agree with that? It was a rough season with 
not really being able to film and having the cast be their own producer, you know, directors and stuff. So I'm sure it needs some work. I didn't get to watch all the episodes, but I watched a little bit of all of them. Mm-hmm. I thought it was entertaining. I don't know. I kind of liked back in our day when we were celebrating our kids getting, going off to college, going off to jail, going wherever they were going. You know, we had more meaning with the families than just women going out and getting their faces done, their lips done, doing a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, you think it was more yeah. more real life back then? Well, back then, nobody knew. Yeah. Then it all became, let's promote this, and I've got vodka, I've got purses, I've got makeup. Everybody had a something they wanted to promote, so I don't know. Then it stopped being kind of real. Yeah. Do you consider yourself the real OG of the OC? Because you kind of like started this whole thing right well scott dunlop when i first moved to dakota when there was 100 homes he was always at our house he and gail his wife and he was the one who wrote the behind the gates it was supposed to be called and i laughed because we don't have a gate we have a noodle Mm -hmm. the yellow noodle that goes up to let you in so but he always said he wanted to write a kind of a curb your enthusiasm type show about our family because every time he would come over i would have writer rich thorne i'd have an actor i'd have directors i'd have people from new york who wanted to escape and come write a book and we had friends from all over visiting and you could go anywhere and say oh you live in Kota? oh do you know gina because we just had so many friends from matt playing baseball with all those teams and all my kids on sports teams we'd meet people everywhere and i've never met a stranger so there was always somebody coming to california and they'd come stay so mm-hmm. He wanted to write a story about that and he started filming it and he went to Bravo and they said, yeah, yeah, go get four or five other families. So then he went and Vicky and Lori worked for Vicky and I don't remember how they found Tamara, but they just started collecting everybody and Joe dated Scott's neighbor, Slade. Mm -hmm. So they just kind of worked their way through and built this show and look what it is now. It's many, many, many shows, huh? Did you ever think that it would get to this point? Like when you first started filming be like this is going to become like a mega, mega franchise. And I'm, I'm at, I'm the start of it. Well, I knew it would be successful because there was no new content back then. There was a writer's strike. Right. So oh, for, right. I think three years, there was no new TV shows. Mm-hmm. So I did the first music videos. I think I did the first reality show that wasn't Ozzy Osbourne. Um, we were the first of its type to do this. So yeah, I thought it'd be successful. Definitely. You know, I thought it was interesting when, you know, you, I, when you were on a podcast a couple of weeks ago about um, talking about when you left the show and how, you know, Vicky and Tamara were supposed to do some negotiations, but like it didn't work out correctly. I mean, were you mad at them after that, after that whole thing happened? And you know, you I was, I was mad. I was mad, disappointed and hurt because I was at a funeral for a 16 year old and trying to be supportive of my neighbor whose daughter had taken her life. It was the first time I knew someone whose child actually took their own life. And it was pretty devastating. And we wanted to be supportive for the family. The whole neighborhood did. So I don't know. I think it just meant to me that it's time to move on and focus on important things to my family and my, you know. So I kind of just brought the horses a little closer and focused on my family more. Mm -hmm. Did you not talk to Vicki and Tamara for a while after that? You know, if we ran into each other somewhere, we'd talk, but they were busy with their lives, raising their children, doing the things they were doing. They were just all busy. Mm-hmm. It's not like, and when they wanted to go out, they wanted to go out with the girls from the current cast and because it would get noted in social pages or something. And none of that really, I didn't care about that. Right. So, Did you feel like it was time for you to leave? Were you ready to leave at that point or no? I think I was ready to just get on with my life and focus on work it was starting to affect my work because they would say mean things like oh gina couldn't come to the sex toys party because she's drunk from last night well gina didn't drink so Mm -hmm. that was a mean thing to say and and i have a lot of clients that are mormon that don't drink so i don't need that perception out there that i drink it's like that's ridiculous considering i raised three kids as a single mom i never drank Mm -hmm. you had to wits about you somebody was always falling and splitting their head open or something 
right? <laughs> so <We're> wild. <laughs> I mean, what kind of changes would you like to see to the Housewives franchise as a whole? I know you, like you said in the beginning, you were really pushing for a gay housewife in the beginning. I oh, mean, loved it. Yeah. I remember my Frankie, Frankie Joseph, the interior designer, he was more of a housewife than all of us. He cooked, he cleaned, he spent more time in his hair and makeup and he would uh, come over and say, let me do your makeup. Oh my God, you can't do this. I got to fix you, girl. And he was so funny. <laughs> it was fabulous having him. He decorated all of our houses and made everybody look good. And he'd go shopping for clothes with me, pick me out cute outfits because I have horrible taste. So <laughs> it was, I really think they should have. It would have been groundbreaking and some kind of wonderful. I mean, he brought so much joy and fun to the filming set when we would take him to Lake Havasu. Yeah. We'd be driving down the road. He goes, oh, no, we're not stopping in this city that has bathtubs with flowers in the front. Yeah, I keep on going to the next city. I mean, I would just cry. Five-hour drive is not fun, but a five-hour drive with Frankie. Colton and I had tears streaming down our face for most of the trip. I love you that. Know? That was so funny. Yeah. Did, you, it was so did, fun. you, did you ever think Gretchen and Slade would make it this far with baby and everything else going on in their uh, lives. I'm so thrilled for her because I know trying to have a baby was a real struggle for them. And she's just, I mean, I'm, she's Instagram every morning. I get to see some special thing with Skylar and it's just wonderful. I'm so happy for them. I'm sad they lost their puppies. I know how important those three dogs were to her to lose all three in a year is pretty sad, Yeah, but maybe she'll get a little puppy. Definitely. How is uh, Vicky doing with Steve? Are you, uh, are, are they in wedding planning mode still? No, I don't think they're planning a wedding. I don't think there's a reason to. They bought the house in Mexico. They love it. I think she said Steve never wants to come home. He just wants to live there. But of course he'll come home. His children are here. Mm -hmm. So they bought a new house in Kodo and they're gutting it. She's been showing its renovations on Instagram every day. So she thinks she's moving in and a week it's like uh, okay it might be a little dusty though because it didn't look done to me